Hello, everyone who is watching this Wednesday's painting session. Today, with two great painter girls, Pio and Yoyo, we decided to combine these two drawings. So we have a fox and we have mountain with some river, pine trees. So we're putting these two drawings into one painting. And we have already discussed, we're gonna have here, so at the foreground, big scale, we're gonna have our fox sleeping on the rock. And behind, we're gonna have some river and mountain um, scape and the sky, yeah? So as usually we take pencil, eraser, and then we start sketching. So we can pretend, so firstly, just kind of I'm playing with the lines. I try to feel how big I want my rock to be. And at the same time, it's also how big I want my fox to be. So I can play a little bit with the just like curvy line of the of the back, maybe also curvy line of the of the tail. Yeah, so anyway, you can see, for example, it takes almost the half of the page, yeah? So it's foreground, it's close to us. Um, and this makes also a nice perspective when later we do all the mountains and all the rest there smaller, yeah? Um, also check that you have enough space to do like the head, the ear, so I can like mark the ears. Yeah, and like this, maybe I change a little bit my back but I'm careful not to make the head too close to the to the edge, so it's not like stick, you know. So it still has a bit more ear, yeah. And then nice, the head is kind of yeah, it's on the rock. So here I also plan this. And here, always careful. I'm always, let's say, I'm falling in this trap, but then I always have to think and avoid making details because now I already want to start making details of the nose, of the fox, but I'm still kind of playing with the, all the dimension, all the positions, yeah? So it's important not to start doing details before you have all the rest painted. Because otherwise, you may then feel, oh, I actually need my fox to be a bit like in the other place. And then I need to move. But then I already painted all the details. So for now, kind of making the tail and the line of the back, yeah, maybe also the line of the leg, this circle line, just a little bit. Yeah, and then I feel, okay, maybe my head is actually is a bit smaller of the fox, but, yeah. And, and that's it. And let's, like, let's leave the fox rest. We come back to do the details um, after. Let's first do... Um, a bit of, okay, I'm drawing some lines. I did some lines as if it's a, it's a rock. Yeah, just, so how, how it's also how we paint, how we draw all these rock and mountain parts. So you must understand that it always have these sharpie lines and it will always have some like one side and another, yes? And then we, we decide which side has light. Then we do the shadow the other side. And yeah. so anyway, here I did some curvy lines to kind of prolong. So as if it's uh, some stone part where the fox decided to sleep, maybe also here a bit behind. So like, so the fox has actually the space where, where it's um, sleeping, yeah, staying. Mm 
very nice. Yeah. And then, of course, we have beautiful river. Um, shall, shall I give you more time to finish Fox on the Rock? Yeah, yeah, of course, yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, take your time. Yeah, I already getting better in um, not rushing. <laughs> so. Yeah, but as I said, just more like the the curvy line of the back. Yeah, this curvy line of the tail, it's also very beautiful. Like the tail is also going forward. And you as an artist, you always should kind of feel what are those tasty parts of your painting. And tasty, I mean, that are like, you know, successful, they work well, people like it catch the, the viewer attention. Yeah, so like the tail, it's very interesting, is in front. Yeah. So those parts, of course, you make more um, elaborated. Yeah. And some parts should stay more calm. Yeah. If you do all the drawing very detailed, then it's also like it gets boring. Because nothing has, nothing is more in attention. Huh? You always need to choose to which part you give more attention, something more interesting, and which parts are just more like neutral. Aha, like uh -huh, yeah, let me see, let me see your box. Okay, it's, yeah, very nice. Maybe a little bit that, like, looking your general paper, yeah? Maybe it could be, let's say, I don't know, a bit bigger, or maybe not so sticked to the edge, but, um, but, I think don't don't move it now. Still, it's like it looks fine. It's but in general, just thinking always about composition. Yeah, composition is how we place all our stuff in um, in our paper. Yeah, but you can always like so that the rest of your paper doesn't look so empty because now it feels wow I have so much space there. It's okay. You can fill it up with mountains. Yeah, with all these mountainscape. Huh? But just like for the future, you can remember, um, yeah, that always first comes the composition. Yeah, so where I where I put my
Yeah, so work, work a bit more on your fox. Anyway, we're gonna also, of course, when we go with paints, then we improve like details or like with, ah, very nice, yay. <laughs> yes, I feel your fox is totally sweet. And um, I think it looks cool. How how is um yo yo fox doing? Um, mommy's helping her. Very good, very nice. Thank thank you, mom, for helping. <laughs> Appreciate a lot, of course. Yeah, so here maybe I have the fox a little bit like this drawing a bit closer if it helps. Yeah, but still, don't like all the shadows we're gonna do with paints. Yeah, so now this is pencil draw. Ah, I see it. I see it. Very nice. Okay, looks girls are ready with the with the fox. Yeah, we're gonna come back to it more detailed once we go to colors. Yeah, so no worries. Let's still work a bit more on our composition. So let's plan. So the space we is left. It's good to place our river, don't place it too high. So I would place my river somewhere here where my pencil is now, yeah? So you see, like, it's very, it's almost on the level of, of the rock of the, uh, of the fox. So if I place it here, then our perspective is a bit more, yeah? So I would say, like, somewhere here would, would probably maybe could be the highest mountains. So, like, just... A little bit behind the fox can be the highest mountains. And in this smaller space, you have to fit the river and some trees, yeah? So the river also, let's like um, play around. Here it goes with a curve line. You can also place it maybe like just, yeah, maybe actually like it can also be with a curve line. Why not, yeah? But still, think that it should be like very small. Like even the line I did now is a bit more big because then it feels like it's very close. Yeah. Once again, it can happen. Maybe the fox is, is sleeping here next to the river. But the smaller you draw it, the... Um, yeah, then it's, it looks more in this perspective feeling <clears throat> that is far away. Yeah. So what I did here, here I did this curvy line for the river. Here's like a little bit as if the line island. Yeah, some part like the other side. And and then I have one line that is like a horizontal line a bit. And then here, of course, we can be placing some like pine trees. I can even plant them just now, just like with the, um, like just with the like vertical sticks. Yeah, so not much doing those. Uh, like I think later with the brush, it's more convenient just to place them. So basically, this is what I did. So not not very high. Very important. I keep my all this part low, so I have lots of space for the sky. And like this, I have the feeling of space that the mountains already now they are really high, yeah, like um, the feeling, yeah. And how we do the mountains? So the mountain is actually here, like the start that I did is just the, like the triangle. Feel it is just the triangle, and here in the middle you do some like broken line, and here again it's just like the start. Um could you could you please um, repeat and could it follow the river? Yes, yes, of course. I will repeat it. Yeah, so no problem at all. Hmm. So the first thing we do, we can choose here some like so where the fox, the rock is ending, somewhere on the level of the fox. You choose like one straight line, and this will be a little bit like where the ground is ending and all the mountains will be starting. Yeah? So just, so then already we have this division. 
Then what we can do, then we, we can draw our river. Yeah. So what do I do here? I can do this one curvy line. So first I can even do just one line. Let's say this is my one line of curvy. Huh? So for now I have just two lines. I have my horizontal line that is not very high. Yeah, if I take a look at my whole paper, it's like maybe one third, even a bit less than one third. And then I did the curvy line for the river. And here we're important, when we draw the river, it goes really narrow, it goes really small, they're far away. So here I'm drawing like very tiny, yeah? And just here to the end, I can make it a bit bigger. Yeah? And this is again, all the perspective rules that there is like very tiny and here it gets a bit bigger. Yeah? Yeah, so this was my third line. I just kind of repeat, I repeat the first line that I did for the uh, river. Yeah, and here now I corrected, I just kind of opened a bit my river because then here it, we see more of it. Uh-huh, yeah, very nice, exactly. Yes, very good. We're gonna put trees there and it's gonna also look nicer. Yeah. Yeah. So once you have horizontal line, you have river, we can start doing the tips of the mountains. And again, yeah, just kind of feel it. Yeah, first, when I mean feel it, just kind of you can move a little bit in the air your pencil, then it feels kind of just it's like pre-planning. And then don't make it too high. We want to really make more space for the sky. And what you do first, you do like this. So let's say you can choose the highest hill and you just do this triangle, yeah? And when you do the triangle, <clears throat> the line here goes almost like in the middle, yeah? And then you can just kind of make it a bit like zigzag. So as if it's um, all the shape. So this could be our first uh, mountain. Yeah, and then we can do like the other hill. Uh, so maybe it's already lower. And you can also change the triangle. So let's say this could be more sharpie. Let's say this could be more, you see it's more open. So this is more closed triangle. So that our mountains are different. So we don't have like all the same, yeah, but because in nat nature is all different. And here again, in the middle of triangle, I do the, some like edge, you saw. Yeah, and then let's say maybe, so now I'm thinking which part could be the, the sun. Yeah, maybe somewhere here we can have the sunset later. Yeah, maybe the, and then I can draw like some other lines that say maybe it's like hills. Yeah, so maybe some corners here. Yeah, it's like, feel free. There is like not really right and wrong in doing these, those mountains. Yeah, so of course you have those, but sharp edges yeah that's that's what would be the yeah if you don't like some you can erase correct a bit yeah 
yeah for example now i feel all my mountains a bit the same maybe i will put just one mountain a bit higher yeah just because it's like but a bit i mean it's like really maybe just one centimeter maximum yeah but it's again it's about composition yeah so then i don't want it all feel too maybe kind of boring And I say maybe we don't really need to do the pencil for the trees. I suggest we do it directly with the with paints. I think it will be more convenient. It will look more clean rather than the... yeah. So then play with your mountains. In the end, yeah, just some triangle lines. Oh, I can see. Wow, I like your mountains even more than mine. Yay. I like that the other one is very tall. It's like very nice accent. Yeah, it's also like a bit, the fox here is close and there is the accent. So the whole painting has this balance. Yeah, it's playing out very interestingly. Yeah, so yeah, you let me know when you're ready to move to paint. Oh, thumbs up. Very nice. Okay, then let's I'm gonna put so rearrange it here. Taking the palette. Yeah. So I suggest we start as usually um I like to start with lightest color. And in this case, it, we can try to do the very light sky. Aha, uh -huh, I see the other mountains ready as well. Yay. Nice job, Yo-Yo. Ah, very fun. Yeah, very, very good composition. I like that you both girls left enough space for the sky. Yeah, so maybe let's try now mixing very pale yellow. So it means I have more white, a little bit of yellow and then I can make here like very it's actually well let's think maybe not the whole sky is yellow we can make a bit as if the sun going down and then actually we can move to the um, to the blue let's let's uh, yeah but let's start with the warm yellow color because then we can put these light uh, Shadows to the to the fox as well, and yeah. So I will start. You will see what I mean. So I'm putting here. Some amount of light. A yeah, tiny bit of yellow, because actually we will not be coloring all the sky yellow. We will color just the, um, um, like if the sun is going down, and then we might have then just blue. But here we will have to be very careful. So before putting, I'll explain, because, so what color we will, we are getting when we mix blue and yellow. Blue and yellow gives us green color. And actually, we don't want to have green color um, on the sky. Yeah, there is usually no green sky. So we will definitely need some, some color to transfer from green to, to blue. And this can be, of course, a little bit of red. So it means from Yellow, we go to a bit of orange, <clears throat> and from orange, then we move to the blue, yeah? But this is already like the whole process of sky. We start step by step. So taking 
more white, less yellow. Mixing also in steps, yeah? like put a little bit, mix if you feel you don't have enough. Yeah. And it's always better to start more pale because if you need, you can always make it more, more light and more. Um, um, another thing, yeah, uh, almost forgot before going with the paints, I lighten up a bit my my pencil drawing, yeah? So I, I had my very strong pencil. So then you can see it in camera, but now I'm lightening up because, yeah, I don't want the dark lines of pencil interfering with my... So here I did it a bit lighter because some mountains may be very light, maybe a bit snowy. Yeah, like let's say here we see, yeah, very... So we don't, I don't want to like strong line there. I can have a dark line where the shadow is, but uh, so, yeah, it, but very important before you start putting water and paints, because then it's okay, no more razor, no more uh, pencil, yeah? So this, And again, we don't, maybe like we can, you can choose or imagine where you want your sunset to, to live. So, um, yeah, maybe somewhere like, maybe if you have some like opening in between the mountains that you feel, aha, uh -huh, this actually is like compositionally. Yeah. So again, this word composition means it's, it's yeah. And here I'm starting, you see, I'm starting with very light. It's almost pale. Yeah. And then what I do, so if I sit my paint and then I wash my brush in, in, in water. And then I just kind of spread the color. Yeah, a little bit. So it's already like just watery and not so intense. And I blend out the border. Yeah, so you see, very pale. And normal, now it feels like I ah, almost can't see nothing. But um, yeah, it's, still, it's also important. I'm not doing very big. I will prefer to have more part for blue sky and the sunset part very narrow. So it's it's not taking the whole page. It's, it's very small. Huh? And what I do next with my sky, I need to get a little bit of orange. Yeah, so it's red mixed with um, with yellow. I mean, unless you have um, uh, the orange ready. And actually here, I, I've mixed it inside where I had my pale yellow mix. So then it also means it's already with uh, with white. So it's not so bright. Yeah? But it's up to you. Maybe you want your sky to be bright. Yeah? I prefer to make it a bit more pale because it's more like on the background. And what I do, so I'm putting my, this like pale orange, a bit more even peachy, like pinky color. And again, you see, I have those stripes. And now I want to get rid of them. I want that my yellow, goes slowly and naturally into the pink. So when I did it, I put my brush to the water, make my brush clean. And then with clean watery brush, I go on top where the borders are. I can kind of blur out the borders. Huh? But also if you use too much water, 
then you might feel the, um, the paint is kind of moving away. Then it means you need just to stop and wait a bit. And um, yeah, then maybe you want to even come back with your yellow a bit. Yeah? If it feels, oh, this, this orange is kind of overtaking too much of my sky. Yeah, then the problem, you mix again or you go back if you have leftovers of your yellow. And you can go back on top with a bit more yellow. No? But blending out those borders is also important to do it quickly because acrylics are drying very fast and um, then, it, then it's just harder to do it. No? And again, I'm not doing it very high. I kept all this, this orangey yellow story kind of very low, yeah? Because the rest I wanna do just the blue, blue color. So then it feels more like a, yeah? So, and don't be afraid, put more water to kind of blend out, spread your paint. Here, of course, then it's important that um, your paper is, is water resistant, yeah? Water resistant means it's more thick because then you can do more movements with brush and water, yeah? So here what I got, like, oh. Yeah, so my mountains and I have my yellow part and I have this pinky orange on top. To as a transition to um, to the blue, huh? because if I don't have this transition, then it means my blue is meeting yellow directly, and then I'm gonna get some green color mixed, and yeah, I don't want it because usually no green on the sky, and yeah, so I have this pinky. Transition, we know that blue is mixing well with pink, then we get nice uh, purple color. Huh? Okay, and then I just take blue. And again, when I'm taking blue color, I can make it a bit more watery. And yeah, and I start from the top. And again, it's more about like spreading out. Yeah, so it's pretty, I have pretty much water, so it helps me to avoid those kind of border lines. Yeah. And I'm just, and once I get to this, to my pink, yeah, then again, I try to make the, the transition. Yeah, and what it means, the transition, I use water to help me. Yeah, but then if I need, I can come back to my pink and go again with a bit more pinky. So like, yeah, so blending two colors in between. Sometimes it's playing back and forth, one color, the other color. Yeah? You might notice if you, maybe you get some, yeah, some like purpley line in between.
Yeah, so try to work on your sky. Your sky can look also different. Doesn't necessarily have to look like mine. Just try to work that your sky is Yeah, so work with your sky. Let me know when you're done with the sky. Then we move forward to, to the mountains. And the mountains we will do in, in like, let's say two steps. First, we choose some first pale color, like something the blue but very pale almost transparent and we're going to cover all the mountains and then a bit darker part we're going to do the the shadow part of mountains yeah Yay, awesome, thumbs up. So now, oh, very cool. Love the sky. Your ones feels a bit more like already more evening. Yeah, like evening sky, very nice. Um, let's say I have just um, this one blue that um, I like. And now I want to have also some blue color from my mountains, but I don't want it to be so bright. So one of the tricks is, is mixing a little bit of brown to the blue. But be careful, don't mix too much. It's not 50-50 in um, proportions. It's uh, yeah more blue, less brown. But what brown does, it makes my color more calm. So like here I've mixed a little bit too much. I go take a bit more blue again. It, it gives you like more grayish blue, yeah? So it's already not so bright and tense. It's very calm. So this is one my mix. And to this mix, I'm adding a little bit of white, but I'm adding to the half of it, yeah? So the half I keep original, just blue with, uh, with brown, and one half I uh, I may mix with white, so actually getting some kind of very grayish color. And so with this mix, I'm gonna do the. Um, I'm, I can cover even all of my mountains. So here maybe I'm not so worried where I had those my lines, and here of course it's important I keep. It's pretty much watery, so. 
it has to be light. Don't make your mountains too dark. Make them very light, very pale. Use much more water. And, and now I'm just covering all my parrots with this. Yeah, you see, it's very light what I have here. Yeah. Yeah, but still my blue is different from the blue on the sky uh, because we don't want to do, you know, like the same. Yeah, because we remember the same is is boring, it's not interesting for our art. Yeah. So here what I did. So I had my blue with a bit of brown, then my blue gets calmer, then I added white, and so I get this very light blue grayish color yeah yeah so don't make your mountains very dark yeah we're gonna do those those shadow parts of mountains yeah a bit more intense then it will look interesting but still also remember mountains are on the background yeah the fox will be our foreground the fox will be yeah the mountains are just Yeah, and you should remember this trick with adding brown color to blue. You can also do the same with green. When you have your green, it's too bright. You want to have it more calm. You just add some brown. And, uh, yeah, and then you can use it in some neutral parts. And, and then again, you add white, then it becomes like very pale grayish green. In our case, now we have like pale grayish blue.
Yeah, so when you when you did this base color for your mountains, yeah, we also just let them rest, let them dry before going to do the, the shadow parts of the mountains. Yeah, and while you're waiting that some part of your painting is drying, the best of course is go and just paint somewhere else. And like this, this moving around the painting is Ooh, okay, nice, yeah? Uh, your mountains were intense, um, but good color, yeah? This grayish, maybe then the opposite, then you can add next time, like when it's dry, I'll be adding darker side of the mountains, but you could actually go and then maybe white, maybe it looks like the snow as well, yeah? But um, we will come back to this, because there I want you to, to use also dry brush technique, for now, just leave your mountains resting and let's go to the dumb part. Here we can do the, the blue color for the river. Let's say here I'm making it a bit more intense, my blue color. So it just took more, more paint, less water. Yeah. So water. So I just just dig the blue as it is. And again, I also I'm leaving it to rest. And again, like while our river is drying, what we can do, we can go and do the, the same like base color for uh, for the rocks. So actually then we just take brown color, but again, I, uh, I want to use not intense, not very bright brown, but you can even mix it with white. So it's more pale. So all you do is just kind of, yeah, just exactly. It's, it's very helps to make it more watery. And at once it looks more transparent. Yeah. And it's base. Like later I'm going to can add darker sides. But now I want to just kind of fill, fill in all the spots or the places that are left with very pale color. Yeah, and especially like here, I will have some green trees. Yeah, like here, the pine trees. Still like, I, I'm adding here a bit of also this, but you see it's very pale. So later I can easily uh, paint on top, yeah, other parts. So this is important. Like always this first base layer is more watery, more pale. And...
So, um, so what is left? No, we still have work to do. And so we need to um, when doing all those um, rocks and mountains, it's very good to use dry brush technique. And what it means, they have almost no water on my brush. So let's see here, I take some brown paint. I can even like, yeah, you know, take off some excess of water of my brush. And then I'm just going, so it's like somewhere my brush is painting, somewhere it's not painting, but it helps me to create those um, kind of texture, yeah? And here, so first I had all these, my uh, first base level, very pale color. And now on top of it, I'm doing like all those rock, let's say, texture spots. Yeah, try it, try it. I mean, no worries if it's not working from once. Um, yeah, you need very little water, yeah? Like I have water, I take my paint, but I can even like take excess of water with my paper towel because if I water, then it's going to be covering completely. Yeah, but try to get this feeling, try to get this um, moment when you see, aha, uh -huh, like the brush is like almost not painting. Yeah, because it doesn't have enough water. But this is exactly what I can use. And I'm just, it's also just making like some somewhere I do a bit more low stripes and just like kind of, it helps me create the feeling of, of rocks and, you know. And the same story works for mountains. And I've noticed that Pio, she has her mountains a bit darker. So you can actually try the same, but taking like washing your brush very well. So it's clean. Then you take white and then you try to do the, um, as if it's like snowy effect. Yeah. Um, but I can't, I can't show it on mine because I have my mountains left very pale. So I'm going to be showing more like this, the same story with the, um, uh, yeah, with those parts. And again, and I'm mixing from my mountains, I'm taking again brown and blue. But this time already, I don't take much. And a white, and you know, maybe a bit. Um, if it's too dark, I can take a bit, but no, not too much. Not. And again, what I'm interested in, my brush is very dry. Yeah, it feels it's dry, but still wash it a bit with. Um, and what I do, yeah, then again, I can. Yeah, you see, it's kind of. It's leaving those brush strokes. It's painting and it's not painting. Yeah? And this is exactly the what I want because it's it's giving me those this this technique. Yeah. So what I'm doing now with dark blue, you PO can try make it with white. And I think it will make your mountains look interesting. Yeah.
and then I'm trying to make and I'm making this. Actually, again, maybe my mountains are a bit too dark, actually, yeah, because again, they are on the background. No more. Hence, yeah, I felt they're a bit too dark. I can bake just straight with white paint on top. Try it, try it straight with white color on top. You feel, ah, huh, it looks nice, yeah. Especially because now already your mountains are dry, then it's working. And this technique of adding white directly to the to the painting, yeah. So you can use it very often when you feel, oh, my painting got too dark. But then you just wait till it's dry, and then you go directly with the. Um, Uh, yeah, with white and uh... yeah, and also be careful. Don't overdo with your mountains and and the rocks. Yeah. I know you might feel, you know, like you want to improve, make it better, but sometimes just like stopping in some moment looks better. Like sometimes when you paint less, it looks better than when you overdo. Um, you know, with, um, with too much strokes, too much like everything, and then it, the paper feels tired and then it's already... Yeah, and it's it's not easy like to have feelings because it's normal. We want to fight to improve our painting. And the best, like when you have this feeling, uh oh, it's getting worse than it was, then it's definitely the moment just like stop and um go paint the other part of your painting or Well, so I have fox left to paint, of course. And I want to also add a little bit of these greenish trees. Um, maybe not too much. Like here, it's like looks very green, but it's also up to you. You're um, artist. It's your job to make a decision. Maybe you don't want the trees at all. Maybe you say, no, actually, I'm already fine with my rocks and mountains. I'm going to make it more like... Uh, this kind of area. No, 
know, I don't know. I'm actually a bit in the doubt if to make green, because then I may get, maybe it's gonna feel a bit too too much everything. Maybe I'll add here some rocks. And it's gonna be a bit more desert, desert uh, thing, you know. Yes, yeah, so this is my intent. Maybe I'm gonna make my drawing without the green trees. Yeah. I'm just making a bit more kind of rocks here, there on the background. Ah, very nice. Oh, yes. Ah, oh, you made some water for the fox to drink. <laughs> That's so sweet. Very nice thinking. So it's gonna get thirsty. Nice. So actually, then we can go to the fox, and then we decide if we do a bit more improvement to the some like if in the end we do the trees or not. Um. So I suggest we we can take some nice bright color. Yeah. So like let's make some orange that is clean. So wash well your brush, or even like if you have more, just take a new brush. And yeah, so also choose like clean spot on your palette. Yeah, so because we were working now with blue and brown, it is all very, um, yeah, uh, let's say muddy, yeah, dirty colors that make, yeah. But we need now something very clean. And first, again, I can work, yeah? So I, I need to do some shadows on my fox. So let's find it back. So you can see that, like, let's say we can have some light uh, on the back of the fort, some part of the tail. I'm actually made, taking some yellow because I feel my orange, this, this red I took is not enough. I want it a bit more shine. Yeah. This is better. And first, I want to create a bit more shine, a bit more yellowish orange in these parts. So then the fox is bright and shiny. And then, where are the shadows? I'm going to do the. So here, I'm even like, it looks even a bit of yellow. But this is the parts that are going to be like the sun from the sunset. Is shining on the fox. Huh? Um, and again, using a bit the same system, like in general, you can either color all your fox with this light color, yeah, or you do here just some some parts, yeah. So yeah, because putting light is important. So this is like light parts of my fox, and then I can easily go and already like do a bit darker, yeah. And, and where is light and where is shadow? Yeah, it's always depends where you have your source of light. And source of light here, we have the sun behind the mountains. And it means it's shining like on the back on the fox. Yeah, so here this frontal part are darker. So just these upper parts, they get some sunlight. Yeah, and here. Yeah, check and check and mix. Maybe you need to add a bit more brown for those darker parts. Yeah, maybe you want to work a bit more like reddish. Yeah, so.
Kara mending a little bit of shadow under the, the fox. And my fox maybe got a bit too reddish. Actually, it could be a bit more lighter. But, well, let me try and see if I can fix it. Now my river looks a bit too bright for the whole composition. Maybe I'll try to do again also a bit the same. Just try and make it a bit more pale. Yeah, so it's not so intense. Okay, and I'm just putting some white on top. But also not everywhere, like I mean some parts. Well, not sure if I'm very happy with my painting today, but it's experimental learning. Yeah. So I've decided to go without without green trees. I think it will be a bit too much. Yeah, maybe then it means a bit more time working on some rocks here. You know, maybe like some rocks around the, the river. But I just felt the green will be too much there. But you can do green trees if you feel yeah, they're going to fit good in your painting. Yeah, and again, be careful not overdoing. This is what I already feel I'm doing. Um, and again, ah, maybe also again putting white on my fox can help. Because I feel my fox got too kind of got lost. Yeah, it's a bit maybe too dark, so it got lost a bit. Maybe if I make it. And of course, correcting is not e like getting the, the right color from the first time is much easier. No? Like, I mean, when you correct, then it's harder when you get the... Yeah, I think I didn't match correctly with my orange color from the start. So now it's a bit, okay. But maybe it actually makes the fox a bit more like it's it's hidden in the rock. Yeah, you can see it from at, at once. And also, I feel my river is a bit too like this line, because I was hoping, of course, to break it a bit with um, with trees, and then I changed my idea. So now I, I also want to 
break a little bit. So it doesn't look like one, this is string line. I'm gonna put just some maybe ropes and And I think it wasn't actually the easiest thing to what we're painting today. Uh, all this texture on rocks and mountains. Yeah, also getting right into the composition, matching colors, something not too dark, something not too light. And um, actually, we had a hard job today. Well, okay, this I think I did it. Oh, that's cool. Did you listen to this at your school? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Your fox is drinking water. Yay. And I like, I like your sky. Yeah, the lightness of the sky makes like very also good balance for your painting. Oh, very nice. Cool. Good job, girls. Yeah, you are getting better and better with every lesson, I feel. Mm -hmm. And this is Yo-Yo's painting. Ah, very good composition. And I love the color of your fox. I love how your fox is light. This is what I didn't manage to do on mine. And so, yeah, compliments, girls. Very well done. <laughs> Good. Don't forget to sign it. Yeah, if you have your your signature is artist, you can sign it in the corner. If not yet, wait till your painting is dry. You can sign it on the back. Yeah, I remember to put like at least the ear. Yeah, now it feels like, oh, of course, I rem remember when I painted it. But believe me, yeah, when you when it's gonna be like after five years, you will not remember, and it will be like, wow, I was that old and I painted this. Mm -hmm. Okay, I keep on here already making a mess on my painting. But very cool. Thank you for joining today. Thank you for painting with me. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned my new skills. <laughs> Bye-bye, girls. Bye. See you next week. Thank you for joining. Okay. Thank you also for watching. Hope you painted with me. Hope you learned some new skills. Yeah. Feel free to message if you have any questions. You can also join the live painting lesson with me. That can, of course, can suggest you live, give some corrections. Okay. See you next time. Bye-bye.